Hello, I'm JW, and this time I'm going to have a look at uh, how you install power to a shed or garage or some remote building. And bearing in mind, this is sort of thing you might have at home, I'm not talking about uh, industrial or that type of installation. So you've got your normal house, and a short distance away, or maybe a moderate distance away, you've got some kind of building, and you want to put power in there. And then the question which uh, several people actually asked is, what do you do about the earthing in the remote building? So this is the sort of deal where you've got your say ground or your garden or whatever and in one position of course you have your house and let's draw the house in here and that it has doors and windows and things inside and of course your house already has electricity provided because obviously it's uh, built that way and uh, your house may even have a roof on top and then, of course, at some point you want to put another building in your garden, and it's probably going to be a shed or a garage or car hole or whatever else you want to actually call it. So uh, here's the additional building. And in the UK this is a fairly common situation, and there's even a fashion now to put garden offices and the like in there. So uh, you need is, of course, to get power from somewhere, as in your house, to the building over here. And typically this will be situated in your garden or at the uh, back of your house or somewhere like that. So in terms of distance, we're not talking huge. It's in the sort of tens of metres away, probably. Certainly not talking about uh, miles away. And of course, in some cases, it can be very much closer to the building. Now, in terms of actually getting power to there, obviously there's various methods you can use. And the most common would be an armoured cable, typically buried underground or in some cases overhead or whatever. But uh, what we're talking about this time is the method of earthing that you're going to use. And the first thing to consider is what kind of earthing you've got in your house. And this is going to be determined by whatever the electricity supplier has given you. It's not something you can normally make a choice on yourself. And in the UK, as we've seen in previous videos, there are three possible options. We have a TT system, TNCS or TNS. And it will be one of those three things. Uh, the other types are not permitted for use in the UK. And domestic dwelling, so it will be one of those three options. Now let's deal with the easiest one first. So if your house is a TT system, and this means you've got an earth rod in there, or electrode in the ground, then the supplier is not providing you with an earth, so your only earth is that earth rod stuck in the ground somewhere. If that's what you've got in the house, then that is what you're going to have to use in your outbuilding as well. There's no choice in the matter, because you don't have either of these, so if you have a little earth rod in the ground here, for your house, then your cable's going to come along and you're going to have to put another one in for your outbuilding over here like that. And that's all you can do because, say, that's the only choice you have. So if you've got a TT in your main building, that's what you're going to have to use in your remote building as well. So earth rod in the ground. And just like in the house, all of the circuits will have to have RCDs on them regardless of whether they need them for other reasons because with an earth rod, any fault current when there's a line to earth fault will be fairly small, so you need an RCD to ensure that the circuits will disconnect. And that's pretty much all there is to that one, so it's just a question of uh, putting another earth rod in at the remote building, and then installing the appropriate things inside. Now TT installations in uh, actual buildings are fairly uncommon in the UK, it's generally one of the other two. So uh, let's have a look at uh, those ones, which are certainly more usual. Now for a TNS service, this is typically, it comes in the property, there will be three conductors, which will be the line, neutral, and earth. And in this case, the S for separate means that the neutral and earth are separate as they come into the building, and they're typically separate all the way back to the transformer, typically found in older properties, and that would be where you have typically a lead cable coming in, or lead covered cable, two cores inside for the line and neutral, and the earth is on the lead outer covering. And that's typically found in older properties. And the other system, which is normally found in newer buildings, is the TNCS. Now that incoming cable only has two conductors inside, which are the line and the combined neutral and earth. And so that's typically what you're going to get in a new building, mainly because the lead cable isn't uh, typically used or even made anymore. And this is uh, obviously what you get with a twin conductor coming in cheaper to supply and uh, therefore use far more often. Now in both cases here the uh, electricity company is providing you with an earth connection 
and certainly in terms of how you're going to use it, then you will obviously connect to that. Now, one possible option you could do with an outside building is to ignore this connection completely, install your own earth rod in the ground, and go down the route that we saw on the previous page there. However, there's very little reason to do this. There are a few specific areas which uh, might require that, but in most cases you are going to want to use the earth connection provided from the electricity supplier, mainly because it's going to be far more reliable than some stick just uh, rammed into the middle of your garden. And bearing in mind they've given it for you, so you might as well use what you've got. Now, in terms of your actual outbuilding, what you do next depends on what is contained within. And uh, I'll just draw the building in there. The main question you need to ask is, does this outside building contain any extraneous conductive parts? And just like in your main house, any extraneous conductive parts are basically things that are conductive, which typically means made of metal. Extraneous means they're coming from outside of the building. In this case, it'll be the actual uh, outbuilding itself. And parts, obviously, which means it's a part of some piece of equipment. Now, the most common pieces that you're going to find coming in will be things like water pipes, possibly gas pipes, although probably less likely in an outside building, or basically any other metallic service that comes into the building. And another thing to consider here is that the if the building itself is made of metal, then that, of course, also will be considered an extraneous conductive part, because if this building was, say, a greenhouse made out of aluminium, it's going to be resting on the ground, and in some cases bits of it buried in the ground, so the whole frame of it then would be an extraneous conductive part, because it's bringing in a potential from outside, as in the ground, into the building. Now, if your building does not have any, and this is probably the most common situation, so it's just a garage that's sort of standing there made out of blocks or bricks or whatever, or it's just a wooden shed or some of those uh, garden offices, which in many cases are just wooden sheds with a couple of lights and a bulb and whatever stuck inside, then if there aren't any, all you need to do is bring in the three wires from the house. So uh, you're going to have your line coming in here, and of course the uh, neutral coming in there, and needless to say the earth coming in as well. And of course, as long as these are sized appropriately for whatever load you have in the building, then that's absolutely fine. So all it is simply the cable coming in, three conductors, then you can connect to whatever equipment it is inside. And this would apply regardless of which type of system it was, whether it was the TNS or the TNCS, provided that there are no extraneous conductive parts in there. Now the cable coming in could be a three core cable, and in which case it's obviously the three cores there. If you're going to use armoured cable, then you could use a two core cable. Steel wire armoured. And in the case of that one, the two cores would be the line and the neutral. And for the earth, you could use the armour of the cable. Now, bearing in mind the armour is not made of copper, it's made of steel. So uh, you would need to make sure that the armour is of suitable size to carry any fault current if there was some kind of problem. But uh, as it turns out, uh, that uh, in virtually every situation up to normal sizes that you're going to be using in your house, the armour of a two-core steel wire armoured cable is big enough to use as the earth connection. So you can just have your two cores inside, armour connected as the earth, provided of course you use the proper glands and things on both ends. Or you could just use the three core, in which case the armour would just be connected to earth anyhow, and you'd use one of the inner cores as the earth as the third one. But uh, either way that's absolutely fine, and there's no real special applications or things to consider other than the usual ones about the size of the cable for the load and the distance, and so on. Now, in the case of your building outside, having extraneous conductive parts, so here's the building, and uh, let's just say that there was a uh, water pipe that came into the building from underground, because you had, say, a tap inside. may have, like, a sink or something in there. So there's your... Uh, water tap in there, maybe a sink or washing machine or something like that, then uh, this is going to be a metallic item, and just like metallic items in your house, you will need to install bonding to this item here. Now, if you're going to bring your wires in, you're going to have your cables coming in, so here's the uh, neutral coming in there, and of course the line coming in, and the earth that comes in from the main house, you will need to connect 
main bonding from this to the water pipe in this case, and if there was a gas one you'd also connect it to that. If this was a metal framed building then of course you would also connect onto that as well. And then the question is how big does this earth lead here in the cable need to be? Now in the case of the TNS system the minimum size for bonding is generally 6 square millimetres, although it's quite often 10 anyhow on mainly new installations. So providing that this here is of a suitable size, this would have to be at least 6 millimetres in size to ensure that it could be used as a bonding conductor. And note that this is separate from the requirement for the earth. I mean, this could be quite thin wire here if it was just supplying, say, one socket or something. And this could, say, be like 2.5 square millimetres, and the earth could maybe be a similar size. But in this particular case, as we've got uh, main bonding required here, this would have to be a suitable size, so at least 6 millimetres for a TNS. If it's a TNCS system, as found in more modern properties, the minimum size for bonding there is 10 square millimetres. So again, this wire here would have to be at least 10 square millimetres, just for the fact it would have to be used for the bonding. The other conductors probably don't need to be because they're only going to be suitable for the load in the actual outbuilding. But the earth wire does need to be considerably bigger than you would at first imagine, because essentially what you're doing is taking the earth from the building, in this case either one of these, and you're extending this outside, and therefore you're treating this as part of your house. If it's got extraneous conductive parts, they need to be bonded just the same as the water pipe in the house, or the gas pipe in the house, or oil lines, or whatever else you've got. Now, unlike on the previous one, if you're going to use that uh, armoured cable, which is by far the most likely choice. If you're going to use a three core, then that kind of means that the minimum size is going to have to be at least six square millimetres, and in most cases probably ten. This also means that the line in neutral will be ten as well, because all the conductors in there are the same size. And you simply need that because the earth wire here is going to be used as the bonding conductor as well, so of course you need that minimum of ten square millimetres. If you're going to use a two-core cable, this is where it goes a bit wrong, because previously we could use the armour as the earth connection, but in this case we can't, because also we need it to be the bonding conductor, so we would actually need a minimum of at least 10 square millimetres equivalent on the armour, and although most armour cables have at least 10 square millimetres of metal around the outside, unfortunately it's usually made of steel, which of course is not as conductive as copper, and uh, to get the same kind of effective conductivity as copper, you have to have a surface area that's around eight times bigger. And in virtually every case, two core cable is not equivalent to 10 millimetres of copper, even on some quite large sizes. So in this case, you would have to use a three core, and most of the time it's going to have to be a 10 millimetre, just to allow for the fact that the third core you're using as the earth is also being used as a bonding conductor. And therefore that needs to be around the 10 millimetre size. And just as before, you would still connect the armour to the earth as well, except we're just going to use the third core inside as the as conductor of at least 10 square millimetres. Now, if you found that it was far too expensive to use uh, this kind of stuff here, then another option would be to ignore the earth connection coming in from the main building here, and then just install your own earth rod here in the ground and then that would turn it into a TT system, and that's always an option, but it's a fairly poor option in most cases because, bearing in mind, you're going to have to put this in the ground, that's extra expense and cost. In some types of locations you may need to have several electrodes or some kind of uh, grid or something in the ground, depending on the local conditions, and of course that means you're going to have to have RCDs and things in here which will ensure it will trip in the event of some kind of fault to ground. So a lot of extra cost and bother, and although uh, using somewhat larger cables here may cost more, in the end it's probably the easiest option, and bearing in mind the earth here is going to be far more reliable than some piece of metal just jabbed into the middle of somebody's garden. So in summary then, if you've got a TT system in your house, then the only choice outside of course is the same, because that's all you've got, so that's the easiest situation. If you have TNS or TNCS in your house, then in most cases 
you can just use those outside as well. And then you'd end up with the same thing in your outbuilding. The only thing to consider here then is if you have extraneous conductive parts, then in this case you will need to have bonding to those various parts, which usually means that the earth conductor and also the bonding conductor is at least 10 millimetres or 10 square millimetres in size. So for these ones it doesn't actually matter, it's just the size that the appropriate load and whatever is sized for. But if there are extraneous connective parts then it will have to be at least 10 square millimetres in size and of course you will need to connect those to the parts there. And typically that's going to be the same things you would have say in your house, so water pipes, gas pipes, and basically any kind of uh, metal frame of a building, and say things like uh, greenhouses or if you've got those shipping containers and stuck it in your garden and used it for storage or whatever. So that's outbuildings, and uh, the reality is that in most situations you can just use the earthing system from the main building, and of course if it's a TT system, well you've got no choice, you're going to have to put an electrode in the outbuilding, but for TN type systems, which is by far the most common, then you can just use the same system as in the house. If you're going to use the two-core armoured cable, then the armour on that is in almost all circumstances easily big enough to be used as the earthing conductor, so it's liner neutral inside and the armour as the earth conductor. However, if you're going to be having extraneous conductive parts in the outbuilding, such as a water pipe, that will require main bonding, and you can't use the armour of the cable for that, because in that case it's not big enough. It needs to be at least 10 square millimetres, or the equivalent size in other metals. And of course in steel that means you're looking for at least 80 plus square millimetres of steel around the outside, which simply isn't the case on almost all sizes of armoured cable. But uh, reasonably straightforward, and of course if you have extraneous connective parts outside then they just need to be bonded in the same way as all those in the house. Either that or get rid of them and uh, therefore you wouldn't need to. Now I've put links in the description to this video to a whole load of other videos which cover things like main bonding and earthing systems and so on. So have a look there, obviously lots more information available in that one. But until next time, thanks for watching.